Hey guys, Tex here. Welcome back to the channel for our weekly watch list for next week, August 2nd, 2021. As usual, we're going to make a quick run through the market indices, the sectors, and a handful of stocks that I'll be watching at least for the early part of next week. Alright guys, so I appreciate you watching. Let's go ahead and roll the intro and get started with the video. <music> Okay, guys, so jumping right in here, as usual, with the SPY, the S&P 500, and after pulling back into the 50-period moving average, we ripped all the way back up to all-time highs. So bulls continue to remain in charge. The narrative remains intact. Every time we touch this 50MA, we get bought right back up. Look at your weekly chart. Nice, healthy uptrend, just riding the 9 and the 20 all the way up, and really no reason to think that this will not continue until sellers have a reason to show up. Um, as of right now, they just don't. Now, we do want to keep in mind our macro picture. Look at this monthly chart. Huge, huge extension to the upside, but as I've said before, price can correct by time. It does not have to come crashing back down. So there's a possibility that we could be facing an extended period of consolidation in choppy markets. But when we do look at our monthly bar that we just closed for the month of July, we are seeing a nice expansion of range. Buyers clearly came in here at the bottom and sellers taking a little bit of profit at the top, but nothing excessive. Everything here remains bullish and I would expect that to remain the case. All right, so Q's taking a look here, seeing a little bit more of a dip here on Friday as we came into the 20 moving average, got bought up and pulled right back up into the 9 EMA. I think that tech might see a little bit of a pullback or just a little bit of consolidation if we see some rotation out of tech that's had a big run up into the earnings. The big names like Apple and whatnot had a big run up. Uh, so we might start to see a little bit of that rotation through the sectors, see people take some profits from tech and start putting that money back into some of the other sectors. That's a distinct possibility. But again, just looking at our charts, the bullish case remains intact here for the Qs as well. IWM, not much changing here other than the fact we are just stuck in this big consolidation zone here. And look at your monthly chart. This is exactly what I was just talking about. Big, big expansion of range. However, what are we doing? We're not having some big correction by price selling off here. We're consolidating, right? We are consolidating up here and finding acceptance after this big move up. You can see every time it tries to sell off, look at these long lower wicks. It's telling you it keeps getting bought up. It keeps getting bought up. You can actually see it a little bit clearer here on your weekly chart. Look at this big consolidation range. The longer that this consolidates and goes on, whenever it breaks out or breaks down, the move is going to be pretty big. The longer it consolidates just always remember that the longer it consolidates the bigger the move will generally be when it picks a direction so as of right now this is bullish right we had a big move up we're consolidating we're finding acceptance and then you would expect to look for another move up so there's still big potential here in the small caps but right now it's just not there yet it has a little bit more time obviously to materialize uh, as it has been digesting this massive move higher that we saw Okay, so now a quick run through our sectors. Starting out with technology, this is of course our heaviest weighted sector. Again, looks pretty much just like the Qs. We've had this really nice run up here, so maybe we start to see a little bit of rotation, a little bit of rotation out of tech and into some of the other names. But again, looking at our macro picture, nice bullish trend up, no reason to think that this will not continue. Going on to healthcare, your second heaviest weighted sector. Uh, look at this big, nice expansion of range here on our monthly bar. Uh, so sitting at new all-time highs, no reason to think that this bullishness won't continue, but I would expect to see a little bit of a pullback, maybe some consolidation. We're going over to consumer discretionary. This one's looking a little bit different. You can see we do have a breakdown below the moving averages here on the daily chart. I believe Amazon is in the consumer discretionary sector, so this might have uh, something to do with that, the weakness in Amazon after their earnings. Uh, big miss on earnings could have uh, helped the discretionary sector kind of break down a little bit here. But again, looking at our macro time frames, uh, bullish trend certainly remains intact. So really not a whole lot to read into that particular sector. But again, um, just going to be seeing, I think, more of that rotation through the sectors. Here's your communication sector. A little bit of a pullback sitting between the moving averages. Again, bullish case remains intact. Financials, this one is different. We've been talking about the fact it is still struggling with the 50 period moving average. If in fact we do start to see rotation out of tech and into some of these other value names, perhaps we see financials finally start to lift up above that 50 moving average and then all time high might be on deck. So overall, again, just a little bit of push and pull continues to remain intact 
between the sectors. Here is your industrials holding above your moving averages, consolidating. If we break higher, I'd say all time high, most likely on deck. And that would play into that rotation out of tech and into more of these value type sectors. Consumer staples, this is your defensive sector. Again, just hovering here at all time high. Bullish trend remains intact. Not much to read in there either. Utilities, another one of your defensive sectors. We finally broke this flag here, pulling back into it right now. But do keep in mind that utilities is one of the only sectors other than energy that has not gotten back to its all-time high after the big COVID sell-off. Okay, so it still has some room to work if it wants to get back up to the all-time high. Uh, real estate, one of the hottest sectors out there, continues to remain so. Uh, look at this monthly chart, really incredible move higher. Uh, so we'll see if we can eventually uh, find some consolidation up here at these highs. But again, really incredible strength. Nice recovery here in basic materials. We saw this breakdown here with the bear flag, another breakdown, but we've since reclaimed that. All right, so a little bit of a, a little bit of a recovery here in basic materials. If we start to see some profit taking in tech, that might help propel basic materials back up a little bit higher. Uh, and then you've got energy, smallest uh, weighted sector in the index, uh, obviously seeing a bit of a pullback here. And uh, as long as the reopening theme for the economy remains intact, I'd expect energy to probably see a bounce back. All right, so now just a quick run through some of the names that we like to trade, uh, jumping in here first with Apple. So the prior all-time high that we broke out from on Apple is actually 145.09, and that comes in from back here, which was... Uh, that was uh, January 29 of 2021. So we finally broke out of that all-time high uh, and we're flirting with it right now. So I think that one thing about Apple is that it had a nice run up into their earnings. They reported their earnings uh, this past week. So I would not be surprised at all to see a little bit of a pullback here. And again, that's going to play into that rotation of the sectors, maybe start to see a little bit of rotation out of tech and into some of the value names. And that might help um, see a little bit of a pullback here on Apple, possibly into the 141.67 level. Um, and do keep in mind, you know, if we just look at the past three days of price action, what is happening here, right? We see these upper wicks. Uh, we're clear, uh, clearly getting sold into into that 9 EMA. So as long as Apple remains below that 9 EMA, it does open the door for a pullback here in the name, again, possibly into 141.67. Now, if we manage to reclaim the 9 EMA, then it could put all-time high on deck. So keep an open mind. Um, as of right now, at least for the early part of next, next week, it's not really on the top of my watch list, but it is always a name, obviously, that I watch. Just want to keep in mind that we're really rejecting the 9 EMA. We need to reclaim it for hope to get back to, to uh, all-time high. Otherwise, we might see a bit of a pullback. All right, so just kind of keep that on the back burner. AMD, uh, this one I'm definitely interested in next week. We saw a big breakout here. Your prior all-time high was 99.23, and then you have that big whole dollar psychological number there at 100. Uh, big breakout from that. You can see on your weekly chart right here and your monthly chart as well. And one thing that I would definitely be looking for is a pullback into about 100 because that would be about a 50% retracement of this weekly bar. And you again, you've got that psychological whole dollar there being that big $100 level and that prior all-time high as well sitting at 99.23. So if we could see some type of a pullback next week into that $100 level, that would be a prime, prime, prime dip buying opportunity there for AMD. Uh, you might catch an intraday short on it. See if you could, you know, catch a short down to around that hundred dollar level. Um, personally, I'll probably be waiting for the long. I just want to see if we can get a dip down into that hundred dollar level to see if we can catch another move up. I don't think this is done. Obviously, we've seen, uh, you know, a big, big uh, breakout here after they reported really good earnings. Uh, so it's driven by a catalyst, and you can see. Uh, you know, huge volume coming in here. Look at the volume on your daily chart as well. So this is really confirming this breakout move. If we could get a pull into 100, that'd be great. I don't even know if we'll get it, but some kind of a pullback is what I would need to get involved uh, in the name. So Amazon, this one is going to be another one of my top watches given this massive gap down. This is like a 7% drop or something like 300 points, I think it is. Huge gap down. Um, they beat on EPS. They missed on revenue. Obviously still profitable, but it was a miss on revenue and they had weak guidance for the next couple of quarters, I believe. So uh, investors obviously did not like that and they really punished the stock. You can see that we broke down well below the 50 moving average, uh, but didn't quite make it to the 200. So this one's going to be pretty straightforward in what we're looking for. We're looking at highs and we're looking at lows. If we can get above highs, then we might start to see a little bit of a retrace of this gap. I don't expect we're going to see uh, Amazon rushing to fill this entire gap, but we might see a run up to 3,400. That's a nice psychological whole dollar 
You can see you've got prior uh, pullback support right there at 3,400. If we can get over 3,400, next target would be the 50 MA, which is right about 3,450 as of now. Now to the downside, if we do break these lows, it certainly has some room to the downside. First target has to be the 200 moving average around 3,268 as of now. And if that goes, we're gonna have some pullback lows down here and down here. So Amazon could see a run as low as 3,100. It may not be done. So just keep an open mind, watch lows, watch highs, and see if we can move into the gap to 3,400, 3,450, or to the downside to the 200 moving average or even lower. Okay, so not really a whole lot more that I'm really interested in other than Tesla, at least in the early part of next week. So Tesla, let's go ahead and blow the chart up here. So Tesla is sitting right near that $700 level. This was a big level that we talked about. Um, you had this prior uh, high from this day here, which was technically 695. Look at this massive volume right here, right? So this one in particular is looking really good if we can get over 700. Every time it comes up here, it gets stuffed, it gets stuffed, it couldn't get there here, and again, it gets stuffed, right? So there is obviously some big sellers setting up here at 700. If they can ever get out of the way, this name has some big squeeze potential, okay? So we could possibly see a move all the way up to 800, maybe 780 area, this prior pivot high right there is something that I'd be looking for. So it remains on watch for a break over 700. That is the only thing that I'd be interested in. And again, it really has to confirm with strong volume and momentum. So with that, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Keep it short and sweet for you this week. I hope you have a great and green week of trading. As always, appreciate you watching. Let's go ahead and end it there, and I will see you guys in the next video.